Hello. In this part of the I lecture, we're going to discuss the neural tunic, and that is the innermost tunic of the eye, and it includes the retina, which is the structure, the neural structure that takes light waves and turns them into um, a neural signal that then is interpreted by your brain as vision. So the neural retina here in this kind of yellow, golden yellow uh, color, covers the entire posterior aspect of the orb on the inside. So it's the deepest of the three layers. It contains two kinds of photoreceptors, rods and cones. And in this image down here, you can kind of see in this cartoon, you can see the rods and cones here. Basically, the rods are sensitive to low levels of light and they do not detect color. Cones are specific to brighter light and they do detect color. So your cones um, take the different wavelengths that are the different um, wavelengths of the spectrum and translate those into neural signals. The rods um, only see low levels of light um, or activated by lower levels of light and don't really detect and don't at all can, um, detect color. So this is explains the phenomenon that when you go outside at night um, and you're just looking around and you don't have very much light, it's very difficult if, if not impossible to distinguish what color something is. They're all, everything are shade of, shades of gray when there's not enough light to activate your cones. Here is another image of the, the retina. You can see the layers of rods and cones here. There are lots of, there's actually 10 layers of the retina um, and I'm not gonna ask you to, to learn all of those, but here are, is the, the neural retina. Um, and here is something called the optic disc. The optic disc is also known as your blind spot. And it's an area where all of the axons um, carrying that visual information are leaving the back of the eyeball. And so there's this large space, well, not large, but there's a space here, which is totally free, devoid of rods and cones. And so if when light hits this um, area, um, there's nothing to detect it. But it, and it's the exit of the optic nerve, which is then going to, we'll talk a lot uh, toward the end of the lecture, the optic nerve, which is going to carry all of that information into your brain. There's another specialization of the retina that's called the macula lutea. And it's really right here. And they call it the yellow spot, but it's never really actually looked yellow to me. The yellow spot here is kind of odd because this is where the... Um, yeah, it's, I don't know why they call it what they call them, but the bottom line is this is the area where the optic nerve is leaving and the um, the uh, opti um, ophthalmic artery, thank you very much. The ophthalmic artery is coming in and you can see the ophthalmic artery branching out to feed the retina in that choroid layer, that middle layer. The macula lutea though is a yellow spot, fewer, fewer blood vessels in that region um, and it is the visual axis of the eye. In the next slide, yeah, this is so cool. Within the macula, there's this area called the fovea centralis. And that fovea centralis is this dip. And when I talked about the fact that there's, there's 10 layers of the retina, um, that means that there's stuff in the light path. There are cells and cellular processes between the light that's coming in this direction and those rods and cones in the back. At the fovea centralis, that doesn't exist. The light is directly hitting the rods and cones. And actually this area is almost all cones. And so this is the area of the highest visual acuity within your retina. So it's the place where you have this absolute sharpest vision on your whole retina. The visual pathway, this is, is not real complicated and we're only gonna go over some of the bigger, the big, big steps. So light is coming in from this direction. Let me turn on my annotate. So light is coming in from he here. So light is coming in this way, okay? And it hits the retina, rods and cones, 
And then that information is transferred, is trans, um, the light waves are transduced into a neural signal by your rods and cones. And then that signal is going to be traveled, is going to travel along your optic nerve. Now, what really, what happens is half of the fibers stay on the same side and half of the fibers cross over. Okay, so that area where we, where we have this crossing is called the optic chiasm. So optic nerve travels from the retina to the optic chiasm. Once we get past the optic chiasm, we um, end up in what is called, okay, come here, let me get my eraser. Um, once we're past the optic chiasm, we then call it the optic tract. So nerve, chiasm, tract. The optic tract then projects to the thalamus, and that's where the relay neuron is. And that relay, that second order neuron in a sensory pathway then projects to this, um, to the um, primary visual cortex, which is area 17 of your occipital lobe. And that is literally where you see. So if you have damage anywhere along this pathway, you will be, um, it will impair your vision. Um, and that can be, um, and it's also true if you knock out anything on post thalamus, you won't be able to see. Damage to the thalamus could cause visual problems as well as damage to the optic tract, the optic chiasm, or the optic nerve. And here's what it looks like uh, in the base of a real brain. So this is the bottom of the brain. Here is the optic nerve. Here's the optic chiasm. Half the uh, fibers are crossing and half are coming from the other side. It's the same side. And so here's your optic tract. Now I want to talk a little bit about the muscles that control your eyeball in it so that you can shift your gaze. So the muscles that control the movement of the eyeball within the bony orbit are the superior rectus, the inferior rectus, the medial rectus, and the lateral rectus. And then we also have a superior oblique muscle and an inferior oblique muscle. All of these um, muscles are going to work together so that your eyeball can so that you basically can roll your eyes um, when I say something stupid or when somebody else says something stupid. Um, and you can look side to side, um, up and down. All of those things are accomplished by the, the combination of actions of these different muscles. And here they are in, in, a, in a real eyeball, in a real dissection. Here's our superior rectus, lateral rectus, inferior, medial, superior oblique, and inferior oblique. So this, if the medial rectus is on this side, then the nose would be over here. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I want you, I do want you to know what, um, what cranial nerves innervates each of these muscles. So the cranial nerves that innervate the medial rectus, inferior rectus, superior rectus, and inferior oblique is cranial nerve three. Okay. The in the um the cranial nerve that innervates your lateral rectus is cranial nerve six, the abducens nerve. And the muscle, the cranial nerve that innervates your superior oblique is cranial nerve four, the trochlear nerve. And so this is where, this is the only time I apply chemistry to, um, to anatomy. So it's L, R, Six S O four. 
lateral rectus, sixth cranial nerve, superior oblique, fourth cranial nerve, and then everything else is three. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Draw. We erase. So LR6, SO4, everything else is three. And then when we get to our summary, I will have covered all of the things I want you to know. What structure is the neural tunic of the eye, that innermost layer? What two cell types detect light? Which one of them detects color? What are the specializations of the retina that I talked about? Be able to describe the path of visual information from the retina to the cerebral cortex. Think about crossing. And then what muscles control the movement of the eyeball? We'd be able to list all six of them. And then what cranial nerves innervate these muscles? Once you have that down, you're ready for your quiz and you're ready for your exam. Thank you so much for your attention.